Hey, Chris. Um, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. No, no, no. All good, all good. Um, first off, let's talk about your new EP that dropped um, on your, what you said, your favorite label or your all-time dream label, uh, Bygo Records. It's been a crazy, crazy experience. I'm super grateful to have an EP release on Bygo. been a big dream for a long time, and I couldn't be happier to finally drop some music on them. Um, tell me a bit about uh, how you felt when you received the news. Like, Not only was it your first EP, but it was on your, your dream label. Like, How was that? Yeah. Couldn't have been any happier. They got back pretty instantly too. I, I think we sent it off and they got back to us the next day. So, um, yeah, it was really good. Really happy about it. Yeah. Um, what was the creative process like creating that album or the EP, sorry? Um, it took a long time, to be honest, because I originally started it when I was in LA with a producer called Weasley. He's the one that features on Get Out. Um, we started that when, we, when I was in LA Obviously, came back to Australia, COVID happened. And then um, while everyone was in lockdown, I just started writing the rest of the tunes, finished the music for it. And it took a long time to actually fully finish the songs and perfect it all. But once it did, sent it off to Bagel and then went from there. Uh That's nice. And it all just fell into place from there. Pretty much, yeah. What was the um, turnaround like for them to upload and start promoting your album or your EP, sorry? Um, well, I'm fairly sure we signed it in December, so oh. it didn't take too long. Yeah, it's not bad. To, like most of the major dance labels. So, um, yeah, signed in December and then came out March. So, yeah, only a few months. And you're in Australia right now? Yeah, I'm in Australia, Brisbane. Yeah. Um, what were you doing over in the States? Um, just working with other producers, having a look around. Um, I eventually wanted to make the move over there, so I was just kind of going over, visiting, have a look at it at all. And obviously you just got back before COVID hit? Yeah, literally like two days before, I'm fairly sure. It was like March 14th or 15th, and then as soon as we got back, boom, everything was crazy. (laughs) And what have you been doing in between now and then? Just working on music 24-7. Yeah, that's it. In the studio. <laughs> Pretty much. Trying to bring out as much music as possible. Um, does any song on your EP uh, resonate with you the most? I'd probably say yeah. Get Out because, um, like, like I was saying, we wrote it when I was in LA, came back, and then everything was, it was like a completely different world. And then the vocals are like, I need to get out. So, like, we were all trapped at home and felt like we needed to get out of the house, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would, I would say Get Out it's, it's, is the one that hits me in the feels the most out of the whole EP. Yeah, personally, my favourite, but the whole EP is pretty good too. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> um, what does music mean to you personally? Um, it means everything to me. Like I've always been doing music since I was a kid. Like when I was, when I was younger, I was like playing guitar and into rock music and stuff, but Music has always been everything to me. When did you get into producing? Um, got into producing when I was like 13 or 14. But um, obviously the music I was making then was absolutely horrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I wasn't taking it serious at all. I was just ripping like pretty much Melbourne bones, bootlegs and all that stuff that was going on then. Like... It wasn't until like 2017 or 2018 I started taking it serious and tried turning it into a career for me. Going through, back through your um, Facebook page's uh, change of names, you started out as Chris and then went to yeah. Notorious Chris. Tell me a little about Notorious yeah. Chris. Uh, I get asked this every interview I do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's the stupidest thing ever, but um keep in mind I think I was 13 14 at the time um so I was a big Conor McGregor fan and he goes by the name the notorious Conor McGregor and then I was like oh notorious that's cool and then so I put it in front of my name notorious Chris and didn't have anything to do with the notorious B.I.G which everyone seems to think which is understandable but um yeah it's a pretty funny story how it all happened 
and then you quickly changed to Chris XL. Yeah, I have no idea where that was going. <laughs> no, I was going to say, what could we expect from uh, Chris XL? Uh, me, just extra large. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now you're bad boy. And is your, you going to stick with your uh, mid-tempo sound or do you think you'll switch up? Uh, I never want to stick to one sound. So even though I could be dropping mid-tempo now, like I'm always going to be like expanding on the sound that I currently have. So like, I'm just trying to, I'm not trying to get stuck in one like niche. I'm just trying to write whatever music I'm comfortable writing and I'm happy with. Some personal questions. Do you have a favorite food? Favorite food? Definitely a kebab, especially after a night out. <laughs> Do you have a favorite place that you go to the most that you, like, you hunt down just to go find? Or any uh, kebab? Anyone. Yeah. There's a one in Fortitude Valley, actually. It's opposite the Met. That's definitely the number one spot I go to. <laughs> and what kebab do you get? Only kebab, a lettuce, sweet chili sauce. Um, what's the tour life like? Like, what can you expect in a day-to-day on tour? Well, I haven't done, like, any massive runs of, like, 30 shows or anything, but um, I played a show overseas, played a few around Australia. It's... Um, I'll live for it. It's good. It's just writing more music, hopping on a plane, playing a show, going to the hotel, writing more music, and then go to sleep, wake up the next morning, catch a flight back. Circle of life. Pretty much circle of life, yeah. Uh, what do you find yourself eating when you're on tour? Kebabs? Kebabs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, not, not really. Pretty much just whatever, whatever there is. You try to stay healthy? Yeah, especially yeah. now. Um, I'm a lot healthier now than what I was, which has been good. Working out a lot more, trying to stay fit. Yeah, hitting the gym. Yeah. What do you lift? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Not sure? No, I'm not sure. Now's the time to brag. No, I'm not bragging about <laughs> that. <laughs> you see me on, on the dumbbells, that's all. Um, out of all the places you've played, What's your favorite place? Um, there's definitely two. There's Mackay, just because before I moved down to Brisbane, when I originally came from England to Australia, I lived in Mackay. So it's kind of like a second hometown crowd to me. And it always packs out every time I play there. And then other favorite place I played was over in Myanmar. Um, I played in Yangon, and that was at some underground base event in a nightclub. That was crazy. Um, then you like all the ways to my song music and stuff like that and they're all singing my music it was, it was a weird experience but um, yeah definitely the second favourite place I've ever played Do you have any um, strange experiences at places you've played? Um, no nah, I'm pretty much one of the boring people I've never had any weird things happen to me oh. while I've played here oh wow oh, I wasn't out expecting that <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you could collaborate with uh, anyone, dead or alive, who would it be? Um, Rez. Rez. I love her music. Obviously, she's a big inspiration behind the music that I write. Um, Blank. He's a pretty much one of the like biggest names in Australian bass music at the moment. Um, mm. His music's killer too. Been a big fan of him for a long time now. Um, yeah, pretty much Rez or Blank. Yeah, um, I think Rez would be great with your mid-tempo sound. and Yeah, for sure. And that artist you said um, on Get Out, um, you guys worked really yeah. well there. Like that was match made in heaven, that was. Thank you, yeah. Um, he used to make mid-tempo. He doesn't really do it anymore. He's like more into the dubstep now. But um, yeah, his vocals fit on top of the tracks. So perfect. Uh, what can we expect from you in 2021? What have you got planned? A lot of new music coming out with some bigger named artists too. So yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be a surprise in here. Any shows? Any shows? We're trying to work on it right now, but there's nothing I can be said just yet. No, no, all good. Or keep it hush hush. <laughs> That's it. Um, you said you uh you originally lived in England. Um, what was the transition like over here, school wise? Um uh, because you came over here hard. when you were hot 
<laughs> when you were, uh, you said 12? Yeah, 12 or 13. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously a big difference, like even education wise, um, like just even the personality wise of like Australian people compared to British people, it's a big difference. But not um, bad. Oh, definitely a good way. Everyone's <laughs> a lot more ch- chilled out, a lot nicer over here. But um, yeah, it took a few years to get adjusted and used to everything. Because obviously, I was so young when I moved there, but I was homesick all the time. I missed um, some of my family and friends back in England. But uh, yeah, like I said, it took a few years to get used to it, but couldn't be more grateful to be living in Australia, especially right now, out of all times. Oh, yeah. Do you miss any of your chocolate or candies? Oh, uh, I used to, but not, not anymore. It's been too long now. It's, you know, and if I do miss anything, I can just buy it at a store over here. So there's nothing major. And what's your take on Vegemite? Vegemite, oh, trash. That was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. no not, a, not a fan, not a fan. Um, what was your first show over here? My first show? Uh, yeah, that you played. Ooh, gro- I think it was Groove in the Mill. Oh, groove shit. The mill. Straight yeah, in the big leagues. Was big one. That was a scary day. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Groove in the Mill. I think that was 2017 or 2018. Um, oh, actually, no, I'm wrong with that. I played Grass Was Green in 2017, and then Groove in the Mood 2018. But 20, the Grass Was Green, I won. I played to like a crowd of two people, and then the Groove and crowd was like 2,000 or 3,000. So it was a big jump. But um, yeah, my first two shows were festival shows, surprisingly. Yeah, no, that's crazy. Was that a competition, or was that just pure luck of just good management? Um, pretty much good management and Triple J kind of sourced me out because I was so young. They were like interested in having me on. So it was really lucky. All perfect timing. No, that's cool. Um, do you have anything to say to your ever-growing fan base before we wrap this up? Uh, appreciate all the love on the EP. So grateful for you all. And thank you for listening. 2021 is going to be our year. I'm excited to see what you got coming out. Should be. It should be. Yeah. Um, Anything you want to add before we finish up? Anything no, that I think that's everything. is important? No? Not really. Just thank you for having me on once again. I really appreciate the opportunity for jumping on your platform. No, nah, man. Thanks for coming on. Um, I really appreciate it. Oh, I got no. one more question. Um, at what point in your career would you say you've made it? That's a hard one because like, there's so many different... Work. Well, probably... Headline and festivals, headline and festivals, and yeah, pretty much that. That's it. Headline and festivals, and on the tour, on the tour a lot. That's it. That's all I want to do. Just make music and play my shows, play my shows, play my music out to everyone. As long as I get to do that, I've made it in my eyes. Simple dreams. <laughs>